Then we move to the next regression analysis. It's about birth, uh, the impact of birth and parenthood on satisfaction. The aim is to test the impact of childbirth and parenthood on satisfaction while controlling for the agenda of children. Uh, we differentiate the impact of childbirth and parenthood. The impact of childhood is the uh, impact of, of becoming a parent. So it's the time, it's the impact of having a baby. And the impact of parenthood is the uh, impact of state of being parents. So it doesn't matter how old the children are. So we separate these two uh, impacts. And the results are shown here, and I'll get into details now. First, uh, at the time of birth, sounds better satisfy parents in the domains of income and relative relations. It's shown here. If the uh, baby is a son and boy, then you get a positive impact here and here. So having son makes more satisfied in terms of income and relative relations. And no advantage is found for daughters because there's no negative, sign, uh, negative significance coefficient. And then, next one is uh, about parenthood. Then we found that being a parent of sons lowers satisfaction in overall life and the domains of relative and social relations, as indicated here. So it's negative. Uh, on, it's becoming a parent, being a parent is negative. And on top of that, if it's a boy, negative gets larger. And, and it's adapted to the, like, something like eight. And then it's also negatively significant here and here. And then no disadvantage is found for daughters. Uh, summarizing this, this result, we can come to the following remarks. Uh, some preference has its root in the domains of income and relations, in, relations with relatives. Thank you. This supports the idea that some preference derives from parental expectations that sons financially support the family, including aged, aged parents, and represent the family in relative networks. And also, we found that, uh, uh, however, the positive impact, of, positive impact of having sons does not last long. This could be overly high expectations, or maybe boys are just terrible. So actually, I have two daughters, so in that sense, I'm really lucky that uh, I don't have boys. And this also explains the first result, actually, here. Here, it says that if it's daughters, the chance of progressing the next part is much higher. Usually this is because, people say because people want, parents have wants to have boys. But this could be because they don't want to have boys anymore, that's why. If it's boys, they don't want to go to the next party. So I don't know, it can be another reason. Going back to the here. Yeah, and then another one more thing. I check the change in some preference. The aim is to test if the impact of having sons diminished over the years. The first uh, top, top part shows the first half, and the bottom part of the table shows the second half. And the results show the positive impact of some births disappears in the second half. <coughs> so, uh, this is positive, I mean, this was expected from the previous regression model, uh, but here it's all insignificant. So from this finding, we can come to the following remarks. Uh, it's about sex ratio transition. Uh, we can, uh, using this result, we can construct, construct the following statement, the following argument, which is economic development ignites the sex ratio transition. On one, hand, on, on one hand, economic development lowers, uh, leads to the low fertility, and we, it raises sex ratio at birth in a country with some preference and prenatal sex selective technology, which was the case in the South Korea. And then economic development also causes socioeconomic changes, such as the introduction of social security system. And such kind of changes 
makes the expected role of the sounds less variable. And then it, may, it can lead to the weaker sound preference and reduce sex ratio to birth. So the ignition of the is ignition can be the same, but the time lag in the impact generates a rise and fall in sex ratio first. Low, fat, low fertility comes first, so that it raises sex ratio at first, and then social economic changes go slowly, and then it's gonna reduce the uh, sex ratio first. So it can explain the full cycle of the sex ratio transition. Yeah, that's all. Thank you very much.